The Gospel from John present to us the beautiful uh, parable of the vine, the true vine, and, and it said that I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him, we bear much fruit. This uh, 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 parable, and uh, the Lord is using this, this parable to, uh, to remind us and to tell us that we are his branches. That we are his people, that we are his church, and we as a church, we are always called by the virtue of faith and by baptism to always follow and keep Jesus Christ's commandments in our hearts. That's the good news. But sometimes, you now, uh, in, in reality, we might find some kind of challenges, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we may have some kind of difficulties, there's nothing wrong with that, even though uh, to those things, the Lord always uh, reminds us and tells us, life is, is a gift, life is full of surprises, life is beautiful, that we can see, we had a beautiful day today, the sun shines, everything is green, and we had a beautiful place in Virginia, it was beautiful. But sometimes, you know, we might carry in our lives some kind of weaknesses, some kind of chances, or whatever those things are. But what the Lord reminds us, if we have some kind of issue, whatever it might be, uh, sometimes worry about anything, something to preoccupy you, sometimes difficult to get along with somebody else, whatever those things are, the Lord said to us and reminds us, we cannot see in our hearts kindness, love, forgiveness without me. It means that we have to come to ask Jesus Christ. He said the gospel, ask whatever you ask and you receive. He knows. He knows what is in our hearts. He knows our lights. He knows our challenges. But he wants to really make our life to be much better much easier and bear much fruit, not in myself, in Jesus Christ's name. That's what we call Christians, because of them, because the Lord calls us first, and calls by your name, and said to us, if you want to be my friend, my disciple, just take your own crosses and come after me. How many times in our lives do we recognize that? Do we ask Jesus Christ to help us to anything? Because it's the beauty of really being part of the church and recognize that Christ is the one who came to, to save us, who came to die for us and rise from the dead exactly to raise us up our minds, body, and soul, and sustain us and give us what we needed. In order to see that, we had to recognize first what are my needs in my life. Sometimes it can be emotional needs, spiritual needs, physical needs, but we need to ask the Lord for those things. Why? Because if we have something that doesn't help us to bear fruit in our lives, whatever it might be, let's put an example, uh, lacking of patience, or lacking of kindness, for instance, or maybe selfish, whatever those things are. When we carry those kind of attitudes, those kind of hearts broken, we cannot bear fruits. Because we are thinking more about me, 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 myself, and not others. That is the reason the Lord used this metaphor to tell us, why are we doing this? I am here for you. I gather every Saturday at 4.30 here in Rocky Mountain, Virginia, around this funny table, exactly to do that to plant the seed of love, of faith, trust, mercy, compassion, to open our eyes and our hearts that you can receive in your heart and now there 
bear my spirit. But how can we do that? Only through the gift of faith. It is the gift of faith that we are recognized that Christ is the true vine and we are his branches. That without him, I can do nothing. This is, this is who we are. This is the beauty and the gift that the Lord wants to remind us. That he established his church here for that purpose. That we came from around Franklin County, Virginia and Rocky Mount, Virginia to really make the kingdom of Christ to be among us. That we are believers, whatever you are, here, it's me, Mountain Lake, in the county, you recognize who you are. Not only for your career or your title, we recognize who we are by the way how we love and follow Christ in the game is right. Simple like that. Our culture and our society, unfortunately, doesn't work in that way. It's business, money, all that kind of stuff. But Christ does. Even though if we encounter those hardships to anything, Christ is always there for us to help us to walk in those situations and to find the answer to those situations, to find the peace and the comfort in our hearts. In the second reading to our letter to St. John, he said that, Dear people, dear beloved of St. Francis, let us love one another, but not only by words and speech, but in deed and truth. How we cannot do this? What does it mean to love Jesus Christ and need it through that I had to do this for the Carlos? I can do that. That is a problem. That we can sometimes follow his request. There is nothing wrong in the contrary. That's what gives us really beauty and joy to our vocation, to our calling as a Christians. That we are called to love Jesus Christ and to be witness of that truth and to proclaim that truth to one another. How? We like Christ. Accepting everybody the way who they are and nice is hard. I know it's not easy sometimes. We get it there. To be patient with one another, to sometimes uh, recognize our own weaknesses, our own difficulties, and ask Jesus Christ exactly to do that. Lord, this is who we are, this is who I am, this is my, my personality, this is my behavior, this is my patterns. I want to ask you to help me how to change that. Help me how to change my attitude. Help me how to be more positive and to trust more in you that I can apply what John said, love you and love myself and love others and did it true. And this is so much needed. It's so much needed in our society, in our culture, in our hearts, in our families. The lacking of that love is what makes sometimes relationships to be difficult. Because of this, because we are not being transformed by Christ, who is there to help us to grow and bear fruit. Fruit of patience, kindness, love, and mercy. We have to ask Jesus Christ all those gifts because we cannot give what we don't have. I cannot be patient when sometimes I am not patient to myself. I cannot be kind when sometimes I am not kind to myself. It's very hard. And one more, I cannot be a Christian if I don't love Jesus Christ. The question is, do, we love, do you love Jesus 
Jesus Christ? Who is Jesus Christ for you? What happens when something arises in our lives? To whom do we trust in those moments? Do we ask Jesus Christ for help? He said in the Gospel, Without me, we cannot bear fruit. This is the good news. The question is, how can we apply this to our lives right now? To our hearts, to our families, to our relationships? It's an ongoing process that we walk every single day. Every day is a new beginning, it's a new journey with Christ. That is worthy? Yes. How many times? All the time. Why? Because it is to Him that we find peace and find eternal life. And, and um, John said here, I want to go back to his readings, and whatever is in our hearts, God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. That is the good news. That is exactly what happened in the Holy Eucharist. We come before to these doors because we had a long week, Kali, oh, what happened this week, sometimes we didn't get along, whatever it might be. And we come to this door to ask Jesus Christ, Lord, I am here because I need to find peace. I need to find comfort. I need to find help. I need to change because sometimes I eat whatever. And I invite you to do so when you receive the Holy Eucharist. That is exactly means the Holy Eucharist, the sacrament of love, this parable of the true wine. That's what happens. It is through His love, through His divinity, to his nature that he wants to plant to our hearts what we need the most. And we have to ask the Lord to help us how to bear fruits out there. That we became what we have received and became partakers of his divinity. This is who we are. This is beautiful. This, this is what it is. Humanity comes together with divinity. To this holy community we became closer to Jesus Christ to strengthen our hearts and our minds to help us out there to conquer what is out there. So much going on out there. But those who walk with faith and walk with Jesus Christ will be able to conquer that and find that peace, find the knowledge and the wisdom to do what is right and to avoid what is wrong. He wants to place that Son of Love every day in our hearts. But I think this is what happens, my dear brothers and sisters. We can be so distracted. We can be so distracted that we don't hear His voice, that we don't talk sometimes. Even though we know that he's there, but doesn't mean that he is close to our hearts. And ask this question How much faith do you have in Jesus Christ? How often do you pray and ask Jesus for help? One thing sometimes makes us to be afraid to ask Jesus Christ for help. Oh, I know who I am, I don't have to ask because sometimes it can be those attitudes, those kind of mindsets. But they start very Christian. A Christian man and woman who trust in Jesus Christ always put yourself before Jesus Christ. And we have an example. Our Blessed Mother is an example because she is the first disciple who listened to the voice of the angel and said, Do to me according to your word. We can learn from our Blessed Mother because she teaches us how to be obedient. He teaches us how to hear his son's voice and how to be his friends and his disciples. It's a journey that we need to walk together. And I encourage you to pray for this church, pray for me, pray for our country, pray for those families who have so many things in this county, we have a problem going on, that the Lord uses us 
as instrument like the dancing of the Sisi, for peace, love, mercy, and darkness, to help us to bear fruits to those people out there. To you first, to your family secondly, and to those around you, they might see you not only, oh, this is so and so. Look at that person. You, you, will, you are like Christ. You are amazing. This is who we are. I don't know sometimes we don't see things in that way. But this is who we are. I am aligned to you. Otherwise, I won't be a priest. Let me tell you, this is the most wonderful experience to be Christians, to be Catholics. But we need to understand what it means to be Catholic and how to be his friends. I know we have temptations, look at whatever means, weaknesses and challenges that happens, don't worry about it. God is good and he has the answer to those problems. He's the only one who can save us and give us life in His name. When you come to reach the Holy Eucharist in a minute, whatever you long in, whatever bothers you, whatever there is talking to you in today's liturgy, I encourage you to say that to Jesus. Lord, help me how to love you. Help me how to love you and the weakness of your truth. Help me how to be more whatever. And you will be surprised what the Lord can do for you and for our community. That we all together identify more ourselves in Jesus Christ, not in ourselves. God bless you.